This was the scene in Montreal Friday night when a pro-Palestinian anti-NATO protest turned violent. Demonstrators threw objects at police, let two vehicles on fire, and smashed windows. At least three people were arrested. Now, during all of that unrest, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was in Toronto attending a Taylor Swift concert with his family. The following day, Trudeau condemned the violence and today said this. There is never any room for anti-Semitism, for hatred, for discrimination, for violence. We, we expect all those responsible to be uh, pursued and punished under the uh, full extent of the law. Conservatives, meanwhile, have pounced on Trudeau's concert outing and accused him of dancing while Montreal burned. The streets of a major Canadian city were set on fire this weekend and the Prime Minister was nowhere to be found. When was the Prime Minister told about the riot and why did he decide to keep dancing the night away? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we condemn unequivocally the rising and concerning rates of anti-Semitism and all other hate crimes in the country. All right, the Power Panel is back on this. We've got Kelly Kreiderman, Lisa Raitt, Brad Levine, and Vandana Cotter. Uh, Brad, uh, this criticism of the Prime Minister being at the concert while this was happening, is this fair? Uh, you know, horrible timing for the Prime Minister. Um, but I think the Prime Minister makes the decision when he goes to concerts and knows full well that he will be, um, you know, photographed or videoed um, at it, that there will be some... Uh, of his de detractors uh, who will draw uh, him into a conversation where he should be uh, focused on his work. At the same time, uh, some Canadians might say, let, let, the, let the Prime Minister have an evening with his family. But when you put yourself in the public like that, and you, you, it's, it's, it's obviously that he's in the public realm, whether he's at a, a sporting event or at a concert, uh, he opens himself up to that criticism. Now, whether or not he had an intelligence briefing prior to this from, you know, from uh, officials that there was planned a m large demonstration, I, 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 I wouldn't want to make that assumption. Let's assume that he did. Then I think that the that the that the uh, the ability for him to judge whether or not it was going to be. Uh, compared like we are today because these these demonstrations may uh, from time to time uh, get out of hand like the one in Montreal certainly did. Uh, so I, I would submit that the criticism is only fair only to a certain uh, point. Uh, sometimes I think if depending on whether or not he had the intelligence uh, he should have pulled back and, and, and made that. But he's made these decisions in the past. Mm. He's erred on the public persona uh, thing. I don't know why he does it, to be honest with you, because it never, lend, never lands him well. well uh, Kelly, is it as simple he wanted to take his daughter to see Taylor Swift? I, I, I mean, I don't know. It, it's, I mean, Montreal police are responsible for what happens in Montreal in an event like this. Is this a legitimate criticism uh, of a federal politician, do you think? I think I think he absolutely has the right or the ability to take his daughter to a Taylor Swift concert. I wish I could take my daughter to a Taylor Swift concert. Um, but the timing, as Brad said, is terrible. And I think um, there this builds on the idea that uh, Justin Trudeau and that Pierre Polyev tries to emphasize all the time is not a serious leader. When Pierre Polyev talked about this, he's like, Justin Trudeau should have taken off the friendship bracelets and left. And I think... I, I, I'm fine with him being at the concert. I think there should have been some kind of quicker statement or quicker leaving the concert, some kind of acknowledgement that he took note of it at some point. The statement didn't come out till midday the next day. I think there should have been, this is his home turf in Montreal as well. I think there should have been a little bit more urgency. I don't think any Canadians begrudge him going to a concert with his family. But I think, you know, there, this is a concern if this kind of, this level of violence and protest becomes something that is seen as acceptable or the norm or, uh, you know, a regular occurrence on a Friday night. I think that becomes a big problem. I've been in cities before in, in Europe where these kind of riots, um, uh, you know, violent riots, uh, destructive riots become kind of a normal thing. And you have uh, very quickly, you have a very different approach and a different police crackdown. And I think that is uh, a big problem for Canada mm. going forward. I think it speaks to the larger issue that Canadians have about, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
the government not having a clear message on Israel or the Middle East. And I think it speaks to all of the history rather than this one event with the unfortunate optics, for sure. Lisa, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, we, we do see these protests in big cities. This one was particularly ugly in terms of the, 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 the violence and some of the things that were being chanted. Uh, but these, this is, uh, you know, jurisdictionally, provincial or municipal when it comes to law enforcement to deal with it. I, I mean, what do you make of the criticism at the prime minister for this? Yeah, I'm not going to yell at you this time, David. So the the reality is, is that I was at the same concert, full disclosure, I did not see the prime minister there. Uh, it's a tough situation to be in. I listened to Bob Richardson this morning on a on a radio show, and he was remind he reminded me of the fact that when you're so low in the polls, when you have such a low approval rating, you should be looking at these things through a different lens because any little thing can become a big thing. I'm not saying this is a little thing. I'm not saying it's a big thing, but anything can actually be blown mm. up to something more than it is. I also think he should have been mindful of the fact that the day before he had made the announcement about the fact that Canada would in, would uh, would execute on any kind of um, subpoena or warrant for arrest yeah. for for Mr. Netanyahu, and that came really before these. So if there was going to be any reaction to that, he should have been prepared for it. Um, and you know, the concert was fantastic. I don't begrudge him wanting to take his daughter. I can't say what he should or shouldn't have done in the moment, but they really should be looking at these things more clearly if they want to get elected. Vandana, what are your thoughts on this? I think conversation like this is why so many people don't want to run in politics anymore. Um, with social media, with, with eyes always on you. Like when I started my political career, I was still faxing things, you know what I mean? So the day kind of ended at a certain point. There was an Instagram. Um, and I think, you know, the family is very important to him. Um, I think it's important that he has a greatly, uh, I think it's great he has a good relationship with his co-parent, Sophie, who was there with him. And that's important. Um, I think that I like I'm pretty sure there would not have been intelligence briefing because that would have you know that would have could have changed things but at the time the Montreal police that was in their jurisdiction and I bet you if he did receive a message saying you need to get on a secure line right now he would have taken that he would have left for that if that was told to him on the question on waiting for the tweet this is where I actually have I'll be a detractor here I have a hard time with social media these days. You just don't know what's real and what's not. Yeah. I would have, and there's so many times where politicians of all stripes have made the wrong call based on tweets. And even now when I see things, I'm like, mm, let me look that up because you just don't know. Um, I think it's important to get briefed properly on the situation, uh, understand exactly what is happening before putting out a statement. I think saying the right thing is better than saying the wrong thing. No, and Brad Vondana makes a, a good point there, right, in that if you rush to judge something, because I was following this on social media, like a, a lot of people on Friday night, it's like, it's a NATO protest, it's a Palestine protest, it's not, and, and people were arguing back and forth and litigating which it was and which side of it you believe. Turns out it was kind of both, it fused together and it turned a little bit ugly. Uh, I mean, uh, should a prime minister, I guess, move at the speed of Twitter? which is what a lot of people seem to be suggesting he do in this situation. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I think there's a, a few things that make it different. And I, I don't disagree that sometimes people um, uh, jump to conclusions when they see uh, things on Twitter. But this is a, in his hometown of Montreal. He represents the writing of Papineau. This is a NATO uh, conference that these folks were protesting. Um, you know, obviously NATO is our, you know, we're, we're a member of NATO. It is an international organization, which is in federal. There's going to be federal, um, obviously there's going to be federal security uh, in Montreal who would, you know, I think provide some high ups in the federal government in, in, in relatively real time uh, the nature of, of the challenge. So the question we can second guess, you know, should he have left the concert? Should he have, you know, should he have, uh, uh, you know, sent uh, a note out quicker? Clearly after, after the concert, uh, I, I agree with the point that, you know, midday next day is too late. You know, we can second guess this, all, you know, till, till next Monday's power panel. Mm. But, but the point is, the, it's the optics. The minute you decide to put yourself in the public realm at a concert, when you've got so many serious things on, 
it just opens yourself up. I'm not saying don't take your daughter to Taylor Swift, um, but it just opens oneself up to that. And, you know, to the point when you're low on the polls, everything just, it, it, it falls on yourself. I've, I've been with leaders who have been low on the polls and just making the wrong turn uh, on the tour bus can become front page news. It's just a horrible feeling. And so when this, you know, when, this, when the Montreal demonstration takes place and he's dancing in Toronto, uh, the optics are horrible. We can second guess what should have happened, what could have happened, but until he, until he either steps down or gets more popular, I think the country is going to make, uh, some, of the, some of the country are going to make these, uh, these, these unfortunate comparisons. Well, I wonder, Kelly, like, is it a good faith argument to say he was doing something wrong by being there? If he didn't know this was going to happen, um, I, I just wonder what, what is it we expect our politicians to do? I mean, this could be another prime minister going to some other event where something happens. You know, sometimes timing just sucks for you and, <laughs> and things happen at the same time. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, what do you think there? I don't I, unless there was like some immediate threat that he knew about. I don't right. think he did anything wrong by going to the concert. I think again, maybe the urgency in reacting to what had happened could have been faster. But I also think he's at a point now where every action is under so much scrutiny because of the, the his standing and his party standing in the polls. And like Brad said, it's it's you get hit harder for these things. If if his polling numbers were double what they were right now, this wouldn't matter as much. The only other thing I and I the points on social media are very are very good ones. The thing is, I don't know how much this adds to what people already believe about Justin mm. Trudeau. And I think a lot of this is already baked in. I think either, you know, you think it's great that he's there with his ex and his daughter attending this concert, if you're a supporter, or you think this adds to your idea that he's an unserious prime minister and that he is not taking uh, a NATO event in Montreal seriously. So I think it, 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 this is compounding, this is cumulative, mm. and everybody mm. has the right to go to a concert on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, I look, everything's an inkblot test in politics, especially in the world of social media, right? But, but Lisa, you know, Kelly yeah. said something interesting there, that if he was higher in the polls, maybe this wouldn't be under such scrutiny. But, like, should, our, should, should public assessment of what is a correct or incorrect act by a prime minister matter on whether or not they're popular? You know what I mean? Like, either it was wrong to stay at the concert or it was okay to stay at the concert because there was nothing he could do. It shouldn't be poll dependent. It should just be what we expect of our first minister. Yeah, that's politics, man. That's the way it rolls, right? That's your. Uh, that's what happens when you're on the down, right? And and not, he doesn't feel like he can do anything wrong. But I, I will. Uh, I will say that I cannot imagine a situation where the prime minister or somebody in his office wasn't shown the possibility that a protest in Montreal at a NATO event could possibly meld with a pro-Palestinian event, mm. which happened the night before as well, that there shouldn't have been some kind of understanding that it could get very hot very quickly there. There should have been some awareness made of it. So I'm, I'm not saying that he knew going in, but I think he should have known. And certainly you would take that as a, as, as a question of whether or not it was a, a good choice for him to go in such a public place. Okay. Uh, Vandana, we're out of time. to give you the last word. Um, I was just going to say that um, I think it's actually not about popularity. I think it's how people take legion, like leniencies with politicians these days. I read a report that the RCMP is actually overflown with requests in um, attacks of with politicians. So I think this is actually how people think about mm. politicians these days, and that's why I worry about more. Okay, uh, we'll leave it there. I want to thank the, the Power Panel for being here with me on this Monday. Thank you, Kelly Kreiderman. Thank you, Lisa Wright, Brad Levine, and Vandana Cotter. Thanks so much, gang.